John Skipper has written stuff on the back of a piece of paper that looks like a diagram. <laughs> there are boxes, there are arrows. Um, David Sampson, we have been summoned here by the people to this desk to unpack what has been framed as enormous industry-changing, sports-changing news. And I will simply read the headline from the Associated Press. ESPN, Fox, Warner Brothers to launch sports streaming platform, John. And there's a lot more in the presentation of this and the press release of this. But the premise here is that three channels, three networks, three corporations really are... Three competitors. Three competitors under which there are many networks, many content offerings are coming together in an unprecedented way, allegedly, to say this is the future of streaming and of sports. And to you, that sounds like what? Well, it's quite confusing to read the quotes, the releases, and it requires some amount of speculation because it's not particularly clear. My speculation is that this is nothing but a light package of channels, much like YouTube TV was a few years, and that what this will consist of is all of the networks listed in their entirety and these networks have been picked because all these networks have sports on them. But a lot of the language around this is quite confusing. The end of the sentence you read was that they're creating a joint streaming platform to share sports assets. As far as I can tell, they're not going to share them in any way beyond what gets shared right now on a pay TV subscription. It's like saying, well, right now, uh, all these networks are sharing their sports assets by being in the cable bundle. Uh, these guys aren't sharing sports assets. There's no indication they're going to be buying sports together. This is just a light bundle. It happens to be delivered by streaming technology, but this is not a sports streaming service. This is a light bundle of sports-rich channels. Now, maybe that's semantic, but I think there's also an intent to slightly confuse things by the three companies. But let's go inside the meeting. So there's a meeting. Was Lachlan Murdoch maybe representing Fox? I doubt it. Was Bob Iger in these meetings? He thanked Jimmy Pitaro, so I assume it was Jimmy in the meetings. And so they're sitting there, although Bob Iger was quoted, and they went right to David Zaslav. So it was the top of the top quoted because this was announced as though they had gone up to the mountain and they had met and come down with the Ten Commandments. So it was presented as though it was a brand new day. So I thought that they sat at a table and they said, hey, what can you contribute? Let's let's put everything we have in the middle of the table. What do you got? What do you, oh, I have ESPN, I have ESPN too. Oh, I've got NBA and TNT. All right, put that in, put everything in. Now, how about if we just go a third, a third, a third? And I thought to myself, that's when the whole announcement lost credibility, that they're each gonna own a third of this with no reporting structure. Who has control of the board? Who appoints the CEO? Because anytime you have a tie, it leads to inaction. So is it whoever contributes the most? Is it whoever gets the most fees for its other networks on other platforms? And what app, even though it's nameless and it's not priced yet, how, when they do the price, why can't Disney say, well, we're 41% of this price, so we ought to get 41% representation? Well, I think that they are going to get the prices that they charge other distributors. So Disney will get more money from the subscription price. I'm assuming the third, third, third is the governance. And while, like you, I find that to be quite difficult governance, it was the governance of Hulu. They, nobody had control. And I think they've set up the same thing here where nobody- but it didn't last. Well, this hasn't even started yet. <laughs> so it has every opportunity in it the future not does. to last. But, but we, I don't think for consumers, everyone's all excited, wondering how much is this going to be? This is my well, alternative. Yes. Why are they excited? Well, I'm not excited for them. Well, part of the premise here is that it feels like a crossover event to serve sports fans what they really want. It goes back to this conversation we've been having forever on this show, which is how is the age of streaming going to change the consumption of sports? How is it going to make it better for consumers of sports. And so here is the premise. You will get offerings from 15 linear networks, from all of the ESPNs to TNT, True TV, Big Ten Network, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what John is saying is that this actually isn't some killer app technologically or even in concept. 
it is closer to what? It's like YouTube TV. I mean, YouTube TV. Like uh, with a guide? Yeah. So all that, all that we're talking about here is you're going to get an app on your smart TV. You're going to click it, and then you'll have a choice of 20 channels, and it may be NCIS New Orleans. I'm out. I'm, Why is anyone in on that? The I think the what they're trying to address that is an issue in the market are sports fans who are going, gee, uh, the sports, the cable bundle was really expensive, but at least I could get all my sports. Now I got to go aggregate a bunch of different apps and services to get all these sports. And these three companies are coming together and going, we'll give you all of our sports, but they're just giving you all their sports by creating a bundle of the channels that carry <laughs> those sports. And some of them carry only sports and some of them carry very little sports. Right, uh, TBS, True TV, TNT are also they, True TV is great during March, but other than that, during March Madness, I'm trying to think when there's carryover because there are too many games but, on CBS. But, when do I ever watch True TV? I'm not sure I ever have. Well, well, you wouldn't, but all they're trying going to say to you is, if you buy this, and it's going to cost, roughly speaking, I would bet forty nine ninety five. If for forty nine ninety five, you can get the men's basketball tournament. They'll not. They'll not mention in that ad, maybe down where the guy talks really fast, they'll say, well, this does not include, you might get sick and nauseous, and it does not include the games that are on CBS, but you still will get the men's basketball tournament, you get the World Cup in 26, you get the World Series on Fox, you get uh, the National College Football Championship on ESPN. So you get a lot of the sports you want, and you get it for $50. I think what they're trying to avoid saying here, and Lachlan Murdoch contorts himself semantically by trying to explain that this is only for cord nevers. I guess when people call, they'll say, now I just want to make sure you've never ordered a cable television sub because this is not for you. <laughs> but it is exactly for the people who are hanging on to their cable television package for $125 but are going to go, oh, for 50 I can get pretty much all the sports I want other than some things that are on Gee, the MLS on Apple. But you can't uh, cancel cable. If you are holding on to cable and you then do this new sports platform, you're lo you, there's no CBS, there's no local, none of your local channels the way you get it on cable or Hulu or YouTube, live TV. So I'm not understanding who their demographic is exactly. Their, their demographic are sports fans who want to save some money and who want to find it easier to aggregate. What is fairly revolutionary about this is a group of of corporations has gotten together and said for the first time ever we're going to take our content put it together and we're going to compete to sell you that content it's called comcast they did that they did do that so. and there may be a reason that nbc is right. not in this mix because right. they may not find this to be additive particularly <laughs> but what does it say john because okay you ran espn at, at no point, it sounds like, in your tenure, was this a thing that was realistically contemplated. So something happened between your tenure and the present that made them consider this, really. No, there was, a, there was an attempt at one point. Apple, at one point, attempted to create this bundle, and they couldn't do it because they would not accept that they had to pay the same prices that Comcast paid. Mm. But they did. They when was, did that, when, to when was I, that, roughly? I don't know, 2016 or 17, give or take. I mean, it's a good idea to be the person who aggregates sports. Remember Bob at one point said, not Bob, Bob, I think it was Bob Chapik or Jimmy said, gee, we're going to try to create a guide where you can use ESPN to find whatever sports you want to find. Now, now we're not going to sell you those channels, but we'll be the arbiter of where everything is and the guide. Not a bad idea, by the way. This is another version of that. But again, uh, my favorite quote here is the where it suggests that they did lots of sensitivity analysis and discovered that this was really only for for Cord Nevers. That was Lockheed Murdoch, yes. Because if this was actually going to compete with the pay, and it's interesting that the guy who's the CEO of the one company that doesn't have a streaming service is That's now Fox. Fox is now stepping outside of that world. Now, by the way, there are lots of people who have already canceled their cable, who never have gotten cable. So it's not all wrong, but I think there are. Uh, I think there is a little bit of an effort here to see whether they're how upset the distributors are going to be. In my opinion, they're going to be very upset. They, I also found it interesting that ESPN announced the next day 
that they were going forward with ESPN Plus, not part of this joint venture, and this is their direct-to-consumer offering, and it's going to be another price that you have to pay for ESPN Plus. And what was interesting is I thought what ESPN wanted to do with its sports was push it to ESPN Plus. But now, do they have a responsibility when they're sitting at the table saying, what are you putting in the pot? What are you putting in the pot? What do you get to keep for yourself? Because in theory, we talked about Bleacher Report sports add-on. Now, we could argue that's going to cease to exist, or we could argue there'll still be stuff on Bleacher Report sports add-on that'll be different than what's put into this app because it's only TNT as an example or TBS. That remains to be seen. But there's going to be a discussion eventually about what gets put in here. Well, well but, no, you know, but I, I don't know what that means. I mean, the discussion is the networks that carry sports that are part of Warner Brothers Discovery or the Walt Disney Company or Fox are in this bundle. When you bundle. do a contract negotiation, you have to talk to the league about what you're obligated to do, they, well, where they, you're obligated. Are you saying that ESPN could go after a new NBA deal and not – tell the NBA or guarantee the NBA that certain number of games no. are on ESPN, certain are on ESPN2, we're going to put some on the this, ESPN+. Plus. Th this doesn't violate that. All they're doing is distributing the ESPN network. The ESPN network has guarantees to the league. You're going to get X number of games on Saturday in such and such a time spot. They're still here. But in the new deal, ESPN may be motivated. Disney may be motivated no. to negotiate like, a deal with the NBA where they get certain games the way Peacock got a Peacock-only game. That comes with a negotiation with the NFL. They're a party to that. They're aware of it. it. Is there not a world where you see that ESPN Plus wants a game, wants an NBA game? No, they, they yeah, I can see a world where they say, we're going to put a, a division championship on ESPN Plus, and you can only get it if you get ESPN Plus. So if then it have, won't be in the new company. Yes, it no, will. it will. It will, because this says it includes ESPN Plus. So everything's on so, ESPN so Plus David, this will is, be So you here. believe that there's a company that's starting where there will be no ability for the three equal partners, which I still don't think they'll be equal, to have anything that's not part of this platform, which you're calling a platform. You're calling no, it a they place can have, where the network. They can live. have anything. They can go to ESPN pay-per-view and put something on that's not in this bundle. But no, they can't go put something on the ESPN that's on Comcast that's not on this. This is what's very funny to me that I'm hearing John articulate with clarity. I'm excited to see this. What John is saying is that skinny bundle, whatever it is, it's really just kind of like a deal. Hey, do you guys want to get these three things that include all of this stuff? Then we have a one price deal for you. And that's what it, but that's. And so, the distributors have to be pissed off then. So, so the question then becomes, okay, so if I'm a consumer who can pay $49.99 to get 15 linear networks, which is really just like my ability to watch all of this stuff, including NCIS, including all the non-sport stuff on those networks and those channels. Um, the question then is, who is most threatened by this um, in this landscape of this new media economy? The distributors. That's what I think too. And, because he, and they, look, I'm just going to talk about the revenue side. Well, the revenue side, Disney is clearly going to see two thirds of the money here because these networks have to be paid for at the same price that Comcast pays for them, or they will violate the MFNs that Comcast has on price. MFNs meaning? Most favored nation. So Comcast. As a most favored nation, almost certainly with all three of these companies, certainly with Disney. Most favored says, nation, just to explain that, that means that you're not allowed, when you're cutting deals of how much your product costs, if you're selling a tire screw to a company that's paying you a dollar a screw, if there's a most favored nations clause, it means that you can't go to another supplier and sell it for 50 cents, because if you do, you have to go back to the first guy and say, hey, I was overcharging you, I'm gonna give you 50 cents off, and now you're only paying 50 cents. And now this is 49.99 a screw. <laughs> exactly. In a different way. Yeah. And, and Sorry to interrupt. No, no, uh, I was just gonna say, as I look at this even more, this is overwhelmingly going to be positive for ESPN and Disney. What they're doing is making all of the Disney networks available now, right? They've talked about we're going to launch direct to consumer. They've just done that with all of the Dis the all of the ESPN mm. networks. Uh, I'm assuming it's a bit of a trial balloon, but none of this precludes. This is no different than the YouTube TV effort. But you're saying they have to charge though. They have to charge this new company. Yes, that's why Disney they have to set up a. 
That's why they have to set up a – Disney doesn't charge them. The, Disney receives payments. The new company The new will, company. The new company will pay – Warner Brothers Discovery for TNT, True TV, TBS. They will pay Fox for Fox, Fox Sports One. Uh, they'll pay the Walt Disney Company for ABC, ESPN. The new all company the needs money. The new company, well, just to ex- explain this, the new company has expenses right off the bat. And because the- if they're getting channels on their platform, they have to go out and buy the channels. And they have to buy them at the rate that the other distributors already buy them. Because that's what most favored nations. Yeah. So there, there's going to be money that's funded by these three companies. If, if then the money, let's say everyone puts in a hundred million dollars, then there's three hundred million in a new company with a new CEO with new governance. And what they're doing is they're going buying channels. They're going to back to each other. So they go back to Disney and say, "Hey Disney, I need all these channels. All right, we'll sell them to you for twelve dollars for ESPN, for three dollars for ESPN two, et cetera, et cetera. All right, TNT, what do you cost? Oh, like seventy five cents. All right." Zaslav, you get 75 cents. Well, well, they probably can skip the one step. They probably (laughs) know these channels are in. They know what they cost. Uh, But that's accurate. The new new entity will have to be funded. I'm assuming it'll be funded a third, a third, a third. Uh, They will buy. They will license those channels. They will go to market to consumers and say, if you just want to get sports, this is your best deal. And NCIS. They probably will not say that. And family feud. I mean, look at what all the announcements. See, all the well, announcements have is, made this sound like it's just sports. Because it it's also— It's not just sports. And in that in that massaging of the announcement, it makes it feel like, again, it's some sort of new product. But what, the newness of this, John, you sort of slipped it in at the end there, is that now you can actually get all of the ESPN family of networks streaming. You can get it in the way that has been long rumored on Wall Street. Yeah. Forget streaming. I mean, streaming is just a technology to distribute. The thing is you're buying them directly from the companies. That's the difference. And that means they are now in the direct-to-consumer business. Disney has now officially gotten into that. But you can only get it with a device, with a smart TV or with an iPad or with some sort of device. You can't just have rabbit ears. A rabbit ear TV will not have access to this. That's why it is a streaming service. So that's the streaming concept. Right, but so you mentioned though, I want to distinguish between again. So Disney doing this themselves via this third, a third, a third governance operation, different from YouTube TV. But YouTube TV feels like another party here that should feel threatened. Well, YouTube TV entered the market as a lower cost bundle that was distributed streaming, and. Uh, that aggregated channels. So, in fact, what these three companies have done is is um, gone into competition against YouTube TV, which has most of these channels. And in one of the great ironies, YouTube TV was launched uh, as a sort of circa $40, $45 channel. And the reason it's now $70 is they launched without ESPN, which was very difficult for their business. And when they added ESPN and the family of networks, they had to take their price up. And now the Walt Disney Company in league with Fox and Warner Brothers is going to, nothing wrong with it, it's good American capitalism, but they're going to go in and compete. Uh, And they're going to, I guarantee you, it's going to be a lower cost alternative to YouTube TV. And it will be an interesting discussion the next time the, the, YouTube TV guys who, yes. have, who have 8 million subscribers, they're a real player. They have, I think, about the same, maybe slightly more subscribers than DirecTV now. I'm one of them. I use the product. Would you – okay, but let me ask you this then because, of course, <laughs> you're competing with the thing that you're also enabling if you're Disney. And so does this get to a place where Disney says to themselves, we don't want to give YouTube TV our stuff. Or no, do you see this all coexisting? I don't think so. I think what they're trying to do at at, um, at the peak, not the peak of anything, just the peak of cable subscription um, penetration, there were about 100 million households. Uh, as cable television has lost households, Walt Disney and Warner Brothers Discovery and Fox are trying to figure out ways to sell products that will allow them to get their subscribers back. Right at one point, it was $100 million times the monthly fee. Now it's 60 million, I'm sorry, homes. Now it's 60 million homes times whatever the monthly fee is. So this, the economics of this will be pretty close to the same on revenue, 
On the other hand, these three companies will incur the expenses, as you pointed out, because they now have to take phone calls from people who want to order. They have to respond to customers whose product doesn't work. They have to deal with credit card bad debt. They have to deal with marketing and finding these people. For people with YouTube TV, the 8 million of you, are you so you're presented with YouTube TV, you know exactly what you pay. I'm presented, I have Hulu Live. No ads, that's my thing. There's no way that I'm paying an extra $49 for what I have. Are you paying an extra $49 for what you have? There is no added value to me. Zero. So, so now I already pay for the. So let's go to the other people. So it's not us, and it's not the only fans. It's not rich white only fans people. We're talking about eight million YouTube, plus add all the Hulu subscribers. Now the people who have cable already. So who's being marketed? This is what I've been racking my brain with. Who is the market for this service? Is there room in the market for another platform of live TV? So David Zaslav the. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO has framed it this way. Um, this new sports service exemplifies our ability as an industry to drive innovation, provide consumers with more choice, enjoyment, and value, right? And so who is getting that value? It feels like the most casual sports fans who don't want CBS or need CBS or NBC, but kind of want everything else. It's a, it's a weird I thought you meant the other side, not the casual sports fans, for the sick sports fan who only wants sports. No, 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 but a casual die it's, it's, it's a bit of a contradiction, right? I'm casual enough to not need CBS and NBC, but I would like everything else. Well, remember, it wasn't constructed to be perfect. They would like to. I'm sure they would like to have all the sports in here, and NBC and CBS aren't in. Well, CBS told them to shove it, right? They, they were. Did. You think, wait, you think that the three of them got together and said, you know what, let's not invite peacock and paramount plus to this table this is a great threesome let's not make it a five a pentagon a five tuple a fuple pentagram thank you i don't believe that that's how this happened i think that cbs and i think that nbc both said that we are gonna continue our investment in paramount plus and in peacock and we do not see any value into funding and being a 20 percent owner in a company that is a Ten sports only bundle. I, I have no idea, actually. Though I would assume, certainly, that NBC did not get a call. They make more money on Comcast, and my guess was nobody wanted to tip them off that hey, we're thinking about doing this. Well, how could they stop it? What's wrong with them being tipped off? Nothing. I mean, you think they were nothing, kept secret? I, uh, That'd be quite a secret. Uh, uh, I also know that the management teams of NBC and Disney are not particularly friendly. So I'm just, right. Uh, my guess would be they did not get a call. And my guess would be CBS didn't either because it just adds expense to the bundle. By the way, every, every distributor has to have a very, very basic package of just broadcast networks. That's required by the law. So you can theoretically drop your cable network, ch- ch- uh, cable subscription, get the most basic one they have to offer, which is broadcast networks, buy this, and you would get almost all the sports you wanted. So, right. so what right. I'm what, right. I, what I'm point. learning is that there is a cable bundle. I never recall seeing that when I was a proud cord lover, where I could have just gotten ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, and Channel 13. I think Public so. television? I, I, I don't I, ever recall that. That's below the basic cable. Is that the broadcast? Well, let me tier. Let me suggest to you that it might not have been advantageous for any of the distributors to highlight that package, <laughs> <laughs> which would be the lowest price package. Do you note that when you go in a grocery store, they generally are marketing the things they want you to buy and not marketing the things they make the least money? I'd like on? Pablo Torre to find out whether or not on cable there is a tier. Whether or not that is not um, no you can cable. Buy the generic cereal version. <laughs> the rabbit ear version. It's the rabbit ear bundle. It but, may be obsolete at this point. Remember, cable started as a way for rural homes to get television because they could not receive the signal. That was the derivation. It was a literal cable that they had to run Yeah, out. it was a literal cable, and it was because the country believed, as he did when they, they uh, invested in the Internet, that it would be advantageous for our citizens uh, to be able to access news and public service announcements, et cetera, right. et cetera. Real America uh, must get Cinemax. Uh, 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 yeah. And I mean, we, we wouldn't have the enlightened and 
intellectual voting population we have without that, probably. Oh, God. I hear your sarcasm. <laughs> but, but, lovely. But one of the big takeaways for many young people here, I think, has been the joke of, of like, now they get cable. Now we're back. And this is a thing we've talked about on this show and on mine with you guys about, of course, how John oversaw within cable the greatest media business in the history of media in terms of money coming in and how the promise of streaming was never a reality, was never delivered to these consumers. And so, of course, John, when you talk about the skinny bundle here, is this a forerunner? Is this just step one? of the great rebundling in which we can get back to that or is is there no I, I don't know undoing? It, feels, it feels hard to get back to the great bundle there's just going to be too many options i mean look already you're going to be able to buy espn here you're going to be able to buy it directly from the walt disney company as a standalone direct to consumer you're still going to get it on youtube tv you're still going to get it in comcast uh i i think it's just more complicated i did an informal poll and by that, I mean I spoke to a bunch of people via text and phone about this before the segment on Nothing Personal. And I had a few interesting comments back. Hey, is there a movie one available? Was one. Is there? Is there? Is somebody going to start a company where I'm going to get all the movie channels so I can watch movies? Is there a news one? Is there a... Someone asked whether there was a porn one. So is there... Are there... The bundle that you're talking about is that we are now going to a consumer with, you only like sports, you only like movies, news, et cetera. But what is news to me from our preparation for this show is the NCIS portion. Because if I have a movie bundle, there's nothing I hate more than going to a movie channel. It's like going to MTV back in the day when they weren't showing videos. And then all of a sudden MTV had no videos. And it wasn't I expected videos. So when I go to a movie channel, I want a movie. When I go to the sports app for fifty bucks, well, that's this I is my, this don't is my want point. NCIS. It's not a sports app. It's a it's a they called cur- it one. It's a curated bundle of those networks <laughs> that, among their programming, show sports. It that's not like the press release. Uh, but it, no, I, it's not quite what it says in the release. No, <laughs> which is why I laugh at the possibility that maybe they're just quietly trying to recreate cable. Like, and this is just like the beginning if of what like John is saying is true. That's what they're doing. And sports is the Trojan horse. Right. That's the larger joke of all of this, a joke that we've been seriously analyzing on this show more than anybody else in human history. The, look, there, there are there are two kinds of consumers I can think of. One is uh, I'll agree with Mr. Murdoch for a moment, which is there are many young people who've never had cable and would like to watch sports. This may be an entry package for those people. However, to suggest it's not also a package for people who are going you know, the only reason I'm still getting cable, and I hear this all the time, is sports, and particularly ESPN. So this is, for the first time, an option that allows you to say, well, if you won't, prior to this, you could not get ESPN anywhere other than buying a subscription from one of the major distributors. But that's, so they're just trying to be a major distributor? Because they're getting ESPN, according to the release, they're throwing. ES- Disney said we're While putting ESPN out in the distributor, which is they're getting, but they're getting the same payment. So I don't, know, I don't quite know yet the incremental revenue, because all it is is another platform that's going to buy from Disney ESPN, right. and the existing deals they have with distributors. If there are fewer subscribers to those distributors, they will say come renegotiation. Hey man, we don't have 100 million people anymore. We have 90. And Disney will say, no problem. I'll get 90 from you, and I've got 10 from this new entity, of which I own a third. I mean, interestingly enough, uh, uh, I'll give you one slight odd thing. The margin on the subscribers from another distributor will be greater because you're not doing the customer service or the marketing. So, in an odd way, while they'll get, let's just make it up, say ESPN gets a dollar. Uh, that dollar is a dollar when it comes from Comcast. That dollar is a dollar minus the cost of this organization or per sub, uh, which will mean it won't be a dollar. It'll be 72 cents. And they only own a third of it. Yeah, but in they'll theory. Get, but for, if, if they end up with a million subscribers, it is the same except for the cost of operating the entity. It's the same money that they'd get from YouTube TV 
or from Comcast. We think that, but we don't know. We don't know what ES, what Disney will have to put into the pot of this new company of the revenue that comes to Disney. It just hasn't, they haven't formulated that. There's no uh, governance that well, at least we've seen. No, but the governance that's been announced is that they'll each be a third, a third, a third. So that would imply, would it not, that they're each funding this venture to a third. I'll bet you a dollar it's not a third, a third, a third. Mortimer at the end when it's all said and done. But wait a minute, I wanna, I wanna ask how this, so the framing of this too, right, is ahead of the next rights deal negotiation, which is the NBA. Talked about that at length as well. John, how do you think this Voltron, that's not really a Voltron, how does it change the bidding for NBA rights? I don't think it changes anything, right? One of the reasons I believe that the whole network is in there is the contract with the rights holders usually specifies it must be on such and such a network. So as long as they put the full network in here, they are in compliance with those contracts. If I'm Adam Silver, I am making sure that I'm speaking to the owners of this new entity and making it very clear that if they think they're going to talk to each other and that they are going to in any way quash the value of what I expect to make as a multiple of what I'm currently making, then I'm going to get my little government friends involved and maybe do a little antitrust yeah, action. But, but this entity is not going to buy sports rights. ESPN is going to buy sports rights. But they're, they're competing entities for the sports rights. I know, rights. but the reason they're doing a separate entity is to provide themselves a dis okay. This is uh, really important, though. I mean, no, no. This distinction I, is very I important. Don't, I actually don't suspect that they're going to sit in a room and go, did we make sure all the microphones are off? Let's talk about what you're bidding and I'm bidding. You could do that now if you wanted David's to. David's face could not be more incredulous. The, your partners with Turner. You're partners with them in a large company. You're both competing well, for an MBA package. I'm partners package. with them in an announcement so <laughs> okay. far. That's all I'm partners with Agreed. them Agreed. But in but theory... They have too much to lose, right? You always got to have the, yeah, they might cheat and they might try to do something, but there's no reason to. You still go buy the NBA rights. You put them on ESPN, ABC, and TNT, and they're in this service. That's two separate companies you just mentioned. Disney and Warner Brothers Discovery. They are, and they will negotiate separately in this case. Uh, by the way, in the last rights negotiation, um, we were allowed, to, as long as we were transparent, we were allowed a certain degree of, of, um, of discussion about what our, what our bids were, and we did ultimately make a bid that was, that was equal, right, in terms of, gee, here's what we pay now, we're going to go up X percent, you're going to go up X percent at the same time. That often happens casually as well, just meaning you often, whoever goes first, you have to match it, right? We did Boy, that. that sounds a lot like what I was saying. No. Which means you, the microphones I, I, were off. You you're, were having once again, the discussions. Once again, you're not going to believe me. But I <laughs> never called a competitor uh, and asked them what they were bidding or how they were handling something unless I called the rights holder and said, I want to discuss doing something together with Fox. I want to discuss doing something together with TNT. But you're no. the one who called, told FIFA that I'll do $1 more than anyone else I bids. I did. But that, I didn't ask anybody else what they were bidding. Just surprise me. Give me a give me a sealed no, envelope, and that'll no, be my bid. No, no, it's illegal. I tend to want to prefer not to do things <laughs> that are illegal. What John is saying, David, is that the law provides enough cover that he doesn't need to do the illegal thing and can get enough of the benefit from the legal thing, while worrying you, person who is concerned about, are they secretly doing stuff to make me get less money? It just seems as though this new company, I think that it's going to be examined. I think it's we can move on for sure. Well, it, just, it raises questions, it, though, about like a lot of questions. What does this really mean in terms of cooperation? What does this mean in terms of sharing of resources, talent, shows? Or how much cross-pollination is there? What does it, it mean for like... consumers? Uh, I, I think this is the old empire strikes back. It's like, all right, with all that's going on, everything going on, we're going to enter the direct-to-consumer game. We're going to do it together. Uh, you want to get your sports? Come get them here. Someone's hand is getting cut off, though. It feels that way. <laughs> but the other big change in the world of sports business and the media economy as a result, John, is this thing that the Big Ten and the SEC have announced, right? And so I want to do the thing here, too, where we decode what this press release is really indicating. But the Big Ten and the SEC uh, have announced that they are creating something together. Um, the SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey, Big Ten Commissioner Tony Petiti, for the first time publicly expressed doubts in their commitment to the future of CFP, college football playoff, if leaders can't get right a litany of issues. And so they are creating what? What are they doing here? 
Well, they're certainly flexing their muscles, their leverage muscles, right? They're suggesting nothing is going to happen that we, the SEC, and we, the Big Ten, aren't on board with. So you better get it right for us, or we'll just go do our own thing. Uh, I think this is, uh, we were talking in the last discussion about who is threatened here. The NCAA is threatened here, right? The NCAA is uh, investigating Tennessee right now, an SEC member. Uh, my guess is that somebody somewhere is going, why the hell are we still engaged in years-long investigations from the NCAA? What good is that doing us? We're the big, powerful SEC and Big Ten. We're going to make our own. Though, of course, the Big Ten did investigate one of its own. So it's possible the SEC, and they, they sanctioned Michigan. Yeah. So it is possible the SEC, what, what, what I wasn't Tennessee suggesting. ought not think mm-hmm. is that by the NCAA disappearing, there'll be no regulatory body because I, the SEC will still. Somebody, there has to be some governance, right? You will not be able to. Just run free and wild. Run free well, and wild. So there will be governance. But I think they're going to suggest they're going to do their own governance well, at some point. The, the, the term of art here is advisory group. This is what David's already laughing. This is what the Big Ten, the SEC have announced. Yahoo Sports. This is their report. But an advisory group is that a formal anything? Is that what is that? You and I are Metalarks advisory group. How much power do we have? Would you say <laughs> a ton, a lot, zero, somewhere between zero and negative ten yeah. iodes of power? No, so no, it's, they it's just a, publicly <laughs> they've just publicly indicated that nothing's going to happen. Without consulting us. We're- so is this a this is a warning? So this is the f- part of the show where we talk about what we're sort of like stewing on. And John, this is in many ways your account, right? Like the SEC was literally your account at ESPN. And your takeaway from this is this is a warning to the NCAA more than anything else. I don't know if they got together and said, let's warn the NCAA. But they got together and said, gee, I'm not really thrilled with a lot of things that are going on here. I think... Uh, either um, Greg Sankey or Tony, I think, sort of makes it clear that uh, that they got to look at 14 team playoffs and 16 team playoff fields. Right. By the way, 16 playoffs, in my opinion, is the right number. So I think Tony has this right. And they're saying out loud, before you make a decision that we are going to disagree with, we're telling you we are big voter number one and big voter number two, and you better make sure you've consulted with us. Or like Mike Johnson, you'll miscount the House, and it will not pass. So who do you think they're talking to? Of course they spoke about when they got together that they were doing a press release, they were doing statements. It was all public posturing for the NCAA to hear. There's no other way. It's not for the normal so fan. They, they what wanna, do they care? What you say is logical. <laughs> but they, but to put a button on it, though, they want to be most favored nation status. Ah, I, they, you are a fast learner, man. They believe they you already have find the out. power. You find out and you comprehend. That's why I'm on the advisory board. Um, Harvard. David, all right, what are you thinking about? Well, it's hard this week not to think about the Super Bowl. And it's hard for me not to, not to long for the days when I had to call Bud Selig directly and beg him to get a hundred grand from the Mikasukis for an outfield wall sign. The what? Mikasukis are an Indian tribe, Native American tribe in Florida, and we wanted to get them as a sponsor. And gambling casinos were not allowed to be sponsors, not allowed. You could not. You had to call Bud. So you bring up your phone and you get an appointment. And you say, hey, bud, hey, it's 100 grand. We really need it. Absolutely not. We do not associate with casinos or gambling. And now I'm watching the Super Bowl in Vegas. I'm watching the way leagues interact now with DraftKings and FanDuel and, and how it's working. And it's a world that I had never dreamt of while operating a team that the not only would they be in bed together, but they're snuggling in a way that leads normally to children. And what I'm thinking about is, can they get through this initial stage of a Super Bowl in Vegas where people, Joe Buck said, hey, it's a mess. Boomer Sison, you don't wanna be near it. People should be staying in Arizona. Can they get through this Vegas week without an implosion? Or can they continue snuggling? That's what I'm thinking about. Okay, I'm I'm trying not to think about. (laughs) You commissioners personally. and better snuggling. So, but Johnny, uh, the point well, being though, Vegas was no, no, the, the, once upon a time. Look, I actually think it has been generally smart business for the embracing of of uh, sports wagering. 
uh, has been good business. But yes, it is a remarkable pivot that all of the leagues and the country has made in a very short period of time. 20 years. Yeah. We're talking 20, 25 years. It's nothing. A quarter of a century goes by like that. 25 years ago was 1999. I, I'm going to end this on a happy note and say that I'm interested and in enjoying the Caitlin Clark phenomenon, mm. which is just spectacular. The fact that people are lining up uh, in gymnasiums uh, out of state to see her play and that she puts on such a show and she actually seems to thrive in this environment. Lots of people would not. Uh, and she survives. She thrives in it humbly as well. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's a actually a fairly profound thing that's happening here. You think that increases the value of WNBA franchises? Yeah. Hmm. I, I think... Uh, People won't even know where she's playing when she's out of Iowa. Yeah. She'll be forgotten. I do think that colleges are special in a certain way with athletes, and you see that here. I do believe she will. it will matter. There are lots of... I see her everywhere she goes surrounded by little girls, uh, and those little girls are going to become WNBA fans. Yeah, I'm, I think the Indiana Fever, which has the number one draft pick, I, it feels like that's a market that is ripe with potential. It's Indiana. Four of our listeners knew that the Indiana Fever had the number one pick in the WNBA well, draft. That, but that's before the Caitlin Clark phenomenon changes. That's the, before we <laughs> radicalized their host, their favorite host, David Sampson, to talk more about the WNBA. The last thing I want to point out, what I've been thinking about, I'll add this in as a bonus because you're mentioning Vegas, is that Roger Goodell says that John Skipper's prophecy will not come true, quote, in his time. In his time, there will not be a Super Bowl streaming, John. That's what Roger Goodell has declared. He was looking at you in the camera when he uh, said it. I don't believe that uh, the commissioner mentioned me by name. I have no idea if he's heard any of my suggestions. He's a listener that of the show. Potentially uh, the Super Bowl one day in the not-too-distant future will be behind a paywall or pay-per-view. Uh, and I know he um, he said that, but smart uh, business people over time change. I think at one point he said that uh, I think they, he was another one who said he wasn't comfortable with betting in the league. Recently. Discomfort no is a fair characterization of the NFL's <laughs> position on gambling. By the way, I'm not saying anything weird about that. I change my mind often. You do change your mind in business often about what the right decision is at the right time. So I don't have any problem with that decision, and I am betting that, uh, betting literally, that if, that in the not too distant future, somebody will decide it's very good business to put the Super Bowl in pay per view. The minds got changed when the money became too much. When you're calling Bud Selig for a hundred grand for an outfield wall sign, or when someone is calling the league and saying, "How about a hundred million dollars?" I mean, it that cha that's what changed Roger Goodell about gambling, and that's what changed Bud Selig and Rob Manford. It wasn't all of a sudden they've said, "Oh, gambling good." The money just became too big. So you're saying that Roger Goodell might stencil and cable into the end zone when the Why profits indicate that that might be the right move. Um, all right, that's the sporting class. I feel like we solved all the world's problems as usual for at least two weeks. David Sampson, John Skipper. Thank you for your insights and thank you for your advisory. We are the Metal yeah. Arc. Yeah, you advisors. guys, you guys go, you guys go have your advisory board meeting at Metal <laughs> Arc and let me know if uh, anything comes out of it that I need to be aware. of. It's a third, a third, a third. I feel like yeah. it's pretty clear what we're doing here. All right. Thank you, Pablo.